Uh oh. Okay, we'll start with this. Boxing insider Rick Glacier took to his social media to respond to people who think he's jealous of Eddie Hearn. He said, to those mentioning in their comments on Twitter X that think I'm jealous of Eddie Hearn's success, that is totally incorrect. The fact is, I dislike hypocrites. Oh. And Hearn is the biggest hypocrite in boxing, having replaced Lou DiBella. Prime example, every time a non-matchroom fighter gets caught on pads, he goes ballistic. But when it's a matchroom associated fighter, he defends them and rumored at times to cover things up. Prime examples are Dillian White when he fought Oscar Rivas. That's bullshit. If anybody can't see that, you're blinded. And it's especially bad defending ped cheats. Where is the morality? That's my beef regarding Eddie Hearn. I'm very straightforward, fly straight in boxing, and I will support. Thank you, enjoy your Sunday. If Rick Glacier is so against ped cheats, and fighters who test positive for banned substances in the sport, then why is he such a big fan of Tyson Fury? Fury tested positive for Nandrolone years ago. Fury absconded under scrutiny for testing positive for Nandrolone years ago. For approximately two and a half years, was it? Does Rick not know, or is Rick Glacier pretending not to know? Or is he pretending that because a lot of time has passed since then, that it doesn't matter? It still matters, and it makes you a hypocrite. If Rick Glacier is so against promotional outfits, that might stand by fighters that test positive for banned substances, then why is he so high on top rank? Top rank have worked with fighters that tested positive for banned substances the same as Matchroom. They work with Fury, who I just mentioned, Oscar Valdez, who tested positive for a banned substance. Is he or is he not a top rank fighter? And wasn't his contest with Robson Conceição allowed to go on even though he popped hot. He's a top rank fighter, and I don't see Rick lay into top rank the way he lays into matchroom. After Jarrell Miller tested positive for about three or four banned substances on the matchroom side of things, guess who picked him up right after that? Top rank. And when that happened, do you think that Rick Glacier was standing at the pulpit, standing on his soapbox, wagging his finger at top rank for signing that fighter, just for him to test positive again? For more banned substances. Where's the morality, Rick? Where is the consistency, I should say. You see, there's nothing you can say about Eddie Hearn. Zippo. And there's nothing that you can say about Matchroom that you can't say about someone else. That you can't say about Top Rank. That you can't say about Golden Boy. Golden Boy Promotions, who promoted Canelo Alvarez during his anti-doping fiasco, the clenbuterol situation, they stood by him. Because you're so against PEDS. Ryan's more recent situation, his doping violation, his fiasco, they stood by him. They still promote him. They still promote his fights when he comes back. Because you're so against PEDS. Rick Glacier talks about being against hypocrites when he's a hypocrite. And it's very obvious that he's a hypocrite. Because he levies criticism towards Eddie Hearn for things you could criticize Top Rank for. Things you could criticize Golden Boy for. There's absolutely nothing you can say about Eddie Hearn and Matchroom that you can't say about them. They're all peas in a pod. So then what's his real beef with Hearn? I think it's because of uh, whoever it is Rick works with. Maybe he works with Golden Boy to some extent or top rank to some extent where he doesn't work with Matchroom. He doesn't work with them at all because I guarantee you that if he did, he wouldn't down talk this guy as much as he does. He's hating from outside the club. Stop hating! When Matchroom lost the purse bid for the Boots Ennis versus Chukadzian rematch, Rick Glacier didn't hesitate to poke fun at it. But this same weekend, Top Rank lost the purse bid for Yanni Beck's fight. And do you think Rick poked fun at that? 
Do you think Rick Glacier kept the same energy? No, no he didn't. Because he is precisely the kind of hypocrite he claims Eddie Hearn is. He's precisely the kind of hypocrite he claims he doesn't like. You know, human beings are not bound to a certain set of ideals the way two-dimensional characters are in a story. Human beings have character flaws, like Rick Glacier, who is so obviously the kind of hypocrite he's talking about. His real beef with Eddie is that he's a foreign guy. From the moment that Eddie Hearn arrived in America and attempted to operate within this market, there were a lot of people that didn't like that. Oscar De La Hoya, Bob Arum, and the other game in town. Boxing being a boys club, that made Eddie Hearn a lot of enemies here in America very quickly. Rick Glacier among them. Rick is just clicking up and towing the line for whatever promotional companies he works with in tandem with what promotional companies rival Eddie Hearns' matchroom. That's all it is, and that's why it comes off as jealousy. Because when you take a step back and look at what criticisms he's levying towards Eddie, there's nothing you can say about Eddie that you can't say about them. Sounds stupid. You're so against performance-enhancing drugs in the sport of boxing, you wouldn't be praising Golden Boy Promotions, whose star fighter just tested positive for a banned substance. Are you demanding that Oscar be burned at the stake, or are you demanding that Oscar not work with Ryan moving forward because of what just happened? No, you're not. That makes you a hypocrite. After five years in the American boxing scene, Eddie Hearns' matchroom is valued at a greater dollar amount than either Top Rank, Golden Boy, or the PBC. Do you think Rick Glacier is at all pleased to hear that? Americans being as xenophobic as they are, do you think he likes that a Brit came over here and his company is worth more than the established companies that were already here he's showing you up showing them up while you poke fun that he lost the purse bid why don't you point out that matchroom is worth more than top rank worth more than golden boy then the pbc why don't you point that out too because you're a hypocrite and rick glacier is no spring chicken this is an old guy the thing about old people is they're set in their ways if he's a hypocrite now it's because he's been a hypocrite it's not gonna change I I don't expect it to. I'm just pointing it out. I'm just giving it to you straight! Because it's the only way I know how to give it to you. Rick's beef with Eddie Hearn isn't because of what he's saying. If it were, all that would make Rick is a brazen hypocrite. And there's no shortage of those in boxing. In men's super lightweight news, Ryan Garcia went off on newly crowned WBA super lightweight champion Jose Valenzuela on a live via his social media. He said, we've got to see how we could get down. Like I said, I've beaten everybody from Robert Garcia's gym that I've ever fought. And the amateurs have not fought one pro from Robert Garcia's gym. So you haven't fought any of his fighters in the pros. I love Robert, don't get me wrong, but I beat up every single one of his fighters. I've spanked every single one in the gym and he knows it. And if y'all want it, I'm going to show Robert Garcia who the real Garcias are, and that's it. I'm going to take down Virgil Ortiz. I'm going to spank Virgil Ortiz again. More amateur stories. I beat them up 3-0. and oh. I know y'all probably don't even spar him. You probably think he's too big. I will knock him out. And you, I might even do you worse. You take home about $3 million. You'd be happy, but you'd lose your teeth. It's not a secret by now that Ryan Garcia has issued out several challenges that I'm not sure he's going to follow up on. He said this and that about Terrence Crawford, this and that about Virgil Ortiz. Now he's saying this and that about Jose Valenzuela. If they could make the fight, I think commercially it would do well, Jose versus Ryan. Two fighters of Mexican descent. Those Mexican-American boxing fans in tandem with the blind idiots that actually follow Ryan Garcia and support him. Commercially, I think this is a fight that could do well if you do it, but I'm not sure they're going to because Ryo campaigns at 140 and Ryan technically never made 140. That when he left 135, every fight that he had after that was more or less fought just above 140, including the last one with Devin Haney. Came in a whopping three pounds over for a fight that was contracted at 140 pounds. Thus, when you talk about a Rayo Valenzuela fight, you have to ask, at what weight? Where's it going to go down? Because I don't think Ryan would get down to 140. Would Ryo fight him at 147 or somewhere in between? Rayo Valenzuela, up until recently, 
His name was attached to a potential Javante Davis fight, but Robert Garcia stated that he's going to take the rest of the year off, and thus, he's not in the running for a Javante Davis fight at this time. There was also mention of potentially running it back with Isaac Cruz at some point next year, but in light of this, a fight with Ryan pays way better, much better than a rematch with Isaac, so I feel like if Ryo had to choose, he would choose this. He would choose to fight Ryan if Ryan is serious, though I'm not sure he is. Ryan is a mimbo. He's a bimbo. He's a male bimbo. A mimbo. I can't even look at a cobra bag the same because of this douchebag. Do you understand that the only reason Ryan uploads so many videos of himself on the cobra bag is because of how his hair moves while he uses it? As arbitrary as that sounds, as silly and effeminate as that sounds, that's why he uploads so many videos of himself doing that. The guy's a bimbo. He's been shooting off at the mouth at everybody, at Caleb Plant, at Terrence Crawford, at Virgil Ortiz, now Rayo Valenzuela. He's about 26 years old, but he behaves more like a six-year-old. Could he beat Rayo? If they made the fight, could he beat him? Maybe. I don't know. Ryan is actually very, very big for 140, for 147. All this talk you hear about Devin Haney being a weight bully because of what he rehydrates to the night of the fight, that actually applies more to Ryan than Devin. Because Ryan is bigger than Devin. He was always bigger than Devin. If Devin is a weight bully, that makes Ryan two times the weight bully that he is because after leaving 135, Devin made 140 successfully in every 140 pound fight he had, whereas Ryan never did. In the context and category that people like to label some fighters weight bullies, Ryan is actually the weight bully. Ryan is not a good fighter. Ryan is not a good boxer. What he is is a big kid with some speed and power. That's what he's got. Speed and power. Skill. He's trash. Talk about Virgil Ortiz. He says he would knock out Virgil Ortiz. Buddy, you didn't knock out Devin Haney. And that was at, what, just north of 140 pounds? You didn't knock him out. I don't think you'd do anything to Virgil at 154. You suck. The fight with Virgil might be easier to make than the fight with Ryo because Ryo's over there at the PBC on Amazon, whereas Virgil, Virgil's right there at Golden Boy, fighting under the same banner that Ryan fights on the same platform that Ryan fights. So if you really want to fight this guy, if you're serious and you mean business, there's absolutely no reason it can't happen. And if it did, oh yeah, that would be a big fight. Virgil Ortiz versus Ryan Garcia, somewhere on the West Coast or the Southwest, you could definitely sell it if Ryan were serious. Ryan's a bitch. He's a pussy. Virgil would punch the moose off this kid's head. He'd punch his eyes out. Put his lights out. He's mouthing off the people he knows he's not gonna fight because if you wanna fight Virgil, that is an entirely doable fight. And I don't think Golden Boy would have any aversion in making it because of the financial gains. Dealing with Ryan Garcia has been a headache for them. Even if he is a bit of a draw, he's a loose cannon. He's a nuisance. He's annoying for them. I know it's been a headache, and I think they'd make a Virgil Ortiz versus Ryan Garcia fight because in beating Ryan, you crown a new star. To imagine if Virgil goes in there and knocks this guy out, doesn't waste than Javante Davis did. Could you imagine what that does for Virgil's profile and his drawing power and how many people would love to see it because a lot of people are tired of Ryan Garcia. They're tired of seeing him shooting off at the mouth. I can't wait for Ryan to come back because I know that shortly after he does, he's gonna lose again. Ryan is not a good fighter. So maybe it's not his next fight, his very next fight. Sometime after that, he's gonna lose again because he sucks. He's garbage. So you know. Ryan's entertaining an Ortiz fight, he's entertaining a Rayo Valenzuela fight. As far as Rayo Valenzuela and his big win over then champion Isaac Cruz, veteran water boy Leonard Ellerby says he wasn't surprised that Jose Valenzuela defeated Isaac Cruz. Neither was I because I picked Rayo to win. I picked Rayo to win a points decision. Isaac Pitbull Cruz had been riding high ever since his competitive loss to Javante Tank Davis back in December of 2021, two years ago. Although there was a caveat to that night, Davis had a hand injury. Cruz was able to leverage that performance into additional opportunities, culminating in a move up to junior welterweight to win a world title over then-champion Roley Romero, who should have never been a champion in the first place. When your claim to fame 
is losing a fight to Javante or beating Roley, none of that is saying very much. Months later, Cruz was deposed of his WBA title by Jose Rayo Valenzuela, and one of the people who has worked closest with Tank over these years said he wasn't at all surprised. They're talking about Leonard, Leonard Ellerby. Pitbull was, with all due respect, a very good fighter, but kind of one-dimensional, said Leonard Ellerby, the now former CEO of Mayweather Promotions, who remains a pivotal guiding force in Davis's career. Speaking in an interview with Marcos Villegas of Fight Hub TV, he's a good pressure fighter, very entertaining, but he can be outboxed. He's got a good chin, but he can definitely be outboxed. And that's what Valenzuela was able to do when he defeated Cruz via a split decision last month on the undercard of Madrimov versus Crawford. Not all pressure fighters are created equal. Not every fighter that shares that base style with another is at the same level. Isaac is on the lower level, the lower tier, and a lower level pressure fighter is tantamount to a brawler, a mauler. They're gonna have a pressure fighter's pace, and a pressure fighter's volume without all the other bells and whistles like shot selection, movement, defense, because even pressure fighters, even guys who come forward a lot, have their own brand of defense that's catching and shooting or slipping and rolling, bobbing and weaving. Not all pressure fighters are created equal. I didn't really score, but he made it look easy, LRB said of Valenzuela. I fully expected Roley to do that, but that didn't happen. Great game plan, just boxed the guy, turned him, made him miss and scored. There had been some whispers that Cruz, had he gotten past Valenzuela in August, he could have landed a rematch with Gervonta, the WBA title holder down at lightweight. With Cruz's loss and a unification bout between Gervonta and Vasil Lomachenko or Shakur Stevenson not happening next, the thinking now is that Tank could meet Valenzuela. That's what Leonard is thinking, but we just talked about this. Robert Garcia shut all of that down. If they're gonna fight, it won't be this year. I picked Rayo to beat Isaac because I looked past all the hyperbole, all the smoke, all the mirrors and all the bullshit. Isaac is a very simple brand of pressure fighter. And where pressure fighters can normally wear down and wear out finesse fighters, in rare instances, very rare instances, you get situations like Lara versus Angulo, or in this instance, Rayo versus Cruz. Pressure fighters got the right base style for the job, but not all the other bells and whistles. Now, this doesn't have to be the end of Isaac Cruz, and God only knows that Mexican fight fans don't care about an unblemished record or a couple of losses. There are still good fights out there for Isaac. The real problem is his ego. His ego was out of control after losing to Gervonta Davis. He turned down a fight with Ryan Garcia. He ignored an order from the WBC to fight Shakur. He turned his nose up at then unbeaten Michelle Rivera at 135. His ego was out of control. Now he's been humbled and he's on the bounce. There are still good fights to make for him, like a William Zapata fight, a Murataya fight. There are other fights at or around these weights he can have, but it's his expectations. What does this guy expect to be paid? You were an undercard fighter before you fought Javante, and you were still an undercard fighter after you fought Javante, but your attitude. You would have thought he won the Javante Davis fight, how he was turning his nose up at everybody. He's got a claw his way back, and he can if he's realistic, but that's the problem. Since that Javante Davis fight, they haven't really been realistic. There were fights out there for Isaac. There's money out there for Isaac if he's reasonable. Though he's been anything but. Leonard said he wasn't surprised when Isaac lost. Well, neither was I. He said that was gonna happen.